All right, we are here for Susan Lawrence, 23 CF 2236. Before we get started, I just want to remind everybody of, of a few rules that we have for court. Of course, you're welcome to be here in court because all courts is open. However, you cannot, if you're in the audience, you cannot say anything during court, either before or after. So everyone is here by order to remain silent while they're in court, okay? Also, you cannot have your phones out unless you're a credentialed member of the meeting. So you're here by order to turn your phones off and put them away. If for some reason uh, you take out your phone, one, your phone's going to be confiscated until the end of these proceedings. Two, you could be held in contempt of court. It's the same thing if you, you yell out something in court. You could be held in contempt of court and face sanctions. Please don't make the mistake of violating these court rules. I know I'm going to trust all of you to follow the rules, and in this case, we'll proceed accordingly. Give me one second here. It's my understanding, I'm not sure who's, who's Mr. Buckman is here. Okay. It's my understanding the state had previously indicated that they wanted to um, file a motion for pretrial detention, but that may have, that position may have changed. It has, Your Honor. After reviewing the applicable statutes, rules, and case law, the state does not have a legal basis to file such a motion. Okay. So in that case, we will uh, legally required to set a bond for this defense. It is a bond of the defense. Yes, sir, may I please you represent uh, Ms. Uh, Lawrence? Yes, may I please the court and sure. emphasize more on behalf of the defense. Um, the defense set a motion to um, set bond for Ms. Lawrence. I'd like to take some testimony from her. Yes, ma'am. Is it please okay if we remain seated? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, please raise your right hand. I swear from the information you shall give us the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God. Yes, I do. All right, go ahead. Can you please state your name and spell your last name for us? Susan Lorenz, L-O-R-I-N-C, as in cat, Z, as in zebra. And how long have you lived in Marion County? About 15 years. Do you have any friends or family here? Yes. Who? I have a sister and friends. Do you have any assets? Um, not really. Okay, do you own any homes? No. Do you own a vehicle? I do, but I got a loan on it. Okay, how much do you owe on the vehicle? 22,000. Do you have any other assets at all? Okay. How much do you think that's worth? Uh, Will you be able to find lodging here in Ocala if you were released? Probably. Do you have a passport? No. Do you promise to come to all of your future court dates? Yes. How much money do you think you can um, afford to postpone? Seventeen hundred. Seventeen hundred. Is that a yes? Yes. I don't have any other questions, Judge. Briefly, Your Honor. Ma'am, you were born in, I believe, 1964? Yes. Making you 58 years old now? Yes. You're not currently married, are you? No. Do you have any children? No. You mentioned, a, I believe, a, a relative, a sister? Yes. What city and state does she live in? Ocala, Florida. And how long has she lived here? About 15 years. Are your parents still living? No. You're not currently employed, correct? That is correct. You, do you own any real property at all? Uh, no. Am I correct that you were renting the apartment that you were living in? Objection, Judge. I would instruct her not the answer. On the renting? I'm sorry? On the question of renting? Yes, sir. Whether or not she owned the property or was renting it. I'm not so. You can answer. Okay. You were renting that property? Yes. Am I right? And are you aware that your landlord? told detectives that he was evicting you from that property? No, I was not aware. You don't own any business, correct? That is correct. And you don't have any financial interest or any in any business ventures here in Marion County, right? No, not. Thank you, ma'am. No other questions? Okay. Ms. Plasma, any additional witnesses? No, sir. Mr. Boston, anything you want to the state does not have any additional witnesses um, pursuant to the statute. The victims do have a right, I believe, to address the court. In this case, the victims are represented by Mr. Thomas. Um, if with the court's permission, he has requested to be the person who speaks on behalf of the victim's family to the court. And I indicated that would be up to you. If he wants to speak, I'm sorry. Thank you. For the record, my name is Anthony Thomas. I represent the family of Regina Owens. Your Honor, the family has asked that I speak this morning to ask 
correspond commensurate with the act. Certainly, the amount of bond for the charges are, are at a number on the schedule that the family does not feel is enough, quite frankly. You know, state, in this case, I believe the bond schedule for all the charges would be about $35,000. The $30,000 is obviously the, the driving force, which is the manslaughter. That bond schedule does not account for the use of a firearm. In this case, that use of the firearm enhances the crime up to a first-degree felony, punishable way up to 30 years in prison. Obviously, here in Florida, we treat cases involving firearms very differently and more harshly. The defendant is facing a charge which potentially could result in her spending most of or if not the rest of her life in prison. She does not have a job. She does not have any real property. She doesn't have a spouse or children who, except for a sister, who would be considered a tie to this community. She's lived here a long time, but she doesn't have any type of financial interest, no business ventures, nothing like that. Based on all of that information, the state's requesting a $200,000 bond. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Judge, given Ms. Lauren's testimony and the amount of money that she can afford to post, the defense is asking for the court to set a bond as to count one, $15,000 as to counts two, $500, counts three and four, $250 and counts five, a $500 bond. She's testified that she has no passport. She has ties to the community. She's lived here for over 15 years. She has no criminal record. I think if the court were to set a bond in the amount the state is requesting, that would essentially be tantamount to no bond for her. So we're asking the court for those amounts. There's been no information filed, correct? No, sir. All I have is the arrest report, and I have it down as count one is the listed here as homicide, but I guess information is manslaughter. So manslaughter with a firearm. Yes, sir. Okay. First degree felony. Culpable negligence is count two. I'm just writing these things down so I know what I'm doing. And that is misdemeanor. Yes, sir. Another assault, is that three? Yes, sir. Another assault, that's four. And battery. Those are all misdemeanors, is that? Yes, sir. So there's five offenses listed? Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Lester? Whatever bond this court decides to impose, the state would ask for additional conditions, including no contact with the victim's children. They're minors, so I'm not going to announce their names at this point. The defendant had no possession of any weapons or firearms. That she not return. What was that? Not return to the victim's residence or anywhere near the victim's residence. I understand that she lives across the street currently, unless and until she is no longer allowed to live there. And I also ask for an ankle monitor. All right. What I'm going to do is honestly the same thing I do every case for the last almost 17 years now. For the most part, the bond schedule is for first appearances when no one has a lot of extra information. You're just trying to take an arrest, file a cause affidavit. You don't have to have a full bond hearing. So I'm not going to set my bond in accordance with the bond schedule because I usually view that as something only for first appearances. What I weigh in every case is what the past record is. And here she doesn't have any past record. And that weighs in her favor. But I also have to weigh flight risk and protection of the community. And those don't weigh in her favor because it's a first degree felony, which means it's punishable by 30 years in prison, which means she 
has an incentive to not return to court. Um, also, we have a situation where a person's been killed. I don't think there's any doubt that uh, he was the person who fired the gun. The circumstances of that, I guess, are what's in doubt. But this is not a who done it as to who was uh, pulling the trigger. It's simply a matter of circumstances surrounding the pulling the trigger. So I'm not dealing with a case where really a lot of unknown facts. Um, but the offense is very serious. Um, so all those weigh against her. What I'm going to do on count one is I'm going to set the bond at 150,000. Um, count uh, two, three, four, and five. Those are the four misdemeanors. I'm going to set the bonds on each of those at a thousand dollars, which is typically what I do for misdemeanors. If she does bond out, I'm going to order. return to her home. Um, it sounds like maybe she's been evicted or has some classes for eviction. It just takes a period of time. Sure, she's in the home. Um, if she does go back there, um, I'm going to order that she only does, you know, if she goes back there just to retrieve her belongings, then she needs to do that uh, in the presence of another person. the ability to live there as long as um, she's not been evicted, but if she, if she get evicted then she can't go back there at all, okay? Um, I guess it's probably better off if you there and just have a third person come and help, help you get your stuff, okay? You cannot possess any firearms or weapons. Okay? If you have no contact with the, with the family of the victim, if you have a passport, you need to surrender it. Uh, you will need to um, be monitored by an ankle monitor make sure that you do not uh, leave the state of Florida, okay? Does the state request anything else? No, you're right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anybody have anything else they want to ask? Not from the state, no. No, sir. Have a nice, very nice day, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for um, uh, your for, uh, demeanor. I appreciate it. Have a very nice day. Thank you, Judge. May be excused? Thank you.